These are a wedge style air brake. There's a wedge that pushes in between two plungers and spreads the brake shoes out to apply the brakes. So the emergency brake is always being applied by a large spring in here that's pushing the wedge. That's the emergency brake. So if you don't have air pressure in your truck, the brake is on. When you release your emergency brake, you're putting air in here and it's pushing against that spring and bringing the wedge back out. When you step on your brake pedal, it's putting air in here and applying it to this small diaphragm and pushing the wedge back in and applying your brake. This port is just an air vent. We have no air pressure, so we cannot budge the brakes. The large springs in the emergency end of the canister are applying the brakes. So that's why we need to cage them. This is a caging bolt. There is a holder. You can keep them on the canister if you want. Right there, you can put the nut on the top. So on the end of the canister, you should have a plug to keep this hole plugged up, keep the dirt out of it. So to cage them, you're gonna slide this in here through the cover, then it has to go through the spring and it goes into another piece. And once you feel it go through that other piece in there that holds the spring, you want to turn it clockwise. It turns a quarter of a turn to lock in. And when you pull it back, it shouldn't rotate at all. Get it up there and then you turn it and it locks in. And this pulls the spring in and holds the um, brake in the off position. Now what this is going to do is compress the emergency spring. Okay, so let's pull this spring all the way back and, and um, release this side of the shoes. So we'll get the same deal going on over here. Spreads on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and cage this rear brake canister. This caging, see this is what you want to do if you need to tow the truck and you don't have air pressure so the brakes are not applied. Okay, now, look at that. Brakes are released. Let's slide this drum off from here. I'm just going to use a dead blow hammer. They do make a drum puller. If you need one, it's really rusted on there, but where they get stuck is right around the hub. That's what centers it. So that's a This pipe here is for the central tire inflation system. It's also 7 eighths. It's air going into the hub, then it comes out in between the wheel bearings. Let's get those out of the way. That one is a 7 eighths. These smaller ones are a 3 quarter inch. And these canisters are removed by threading them in. So this here, I think, is going to end up hitting the axle housing. So I'm going to remove this 90 degree fitting. We can take them both out, I guess. And 
since this bottom one turned, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it so I can put some new thread sealer on it. So there's a locking nut on here. I have this little spanner wrench. So you need to back that off. And then we can turn the canister. Okay, that's the canister. So there's a plunger in here. The diaphragm, when you put the air in here with your, when you step on the brake pedal, it pushes this plunger, that pushes the wedge. It has these rollers on it, and it pushes into some plungers in here that push out on the brake shoes. There's a spring in between the two brake shoes. And there's a clip up here that holds it. So I think what I'm gonna do is Get it out of the clip. And then that released some of the tension on the spring. And then back here. Oh, yeah, right there. I'm just gonna. I think that did it. Yeah. So that unhooked the um, front spring. Now, it should just come off, right? Ta-da! Okay, we're just inspecting the brake shoes. Looking for any cracks on the edges. Don't see any. And it's okay if there's some cracks on the edges, but they don't want to be any larger than a sixteenth of an inch, any thicker, and any can't be any longer than an inch and a half. And then when we look at the surface, and we don't have any pieces of the pad missing. If some pad is missing, that's acceptable. If a portion of the pad is missing that exposes a rivet, then you can no longer have that in service. But if just a little bit of the corners are missing, that's acceptable as long as it's not back to a rivet. Surface cracks in the lining face can extend from hole to hole. So all these surface cracks that we have look all right. If a surface crack extends all the way out and through the lining, then that would be out of service, but none of ours do extend through the edge of the lining. Ours are all just surface cracks, not out to the edge, so we're looking good. Now we can take apart the brake caliper. This is the adjusting end, and the other one is non-adjusting. These are three quarters. Need to pull these out so the plungers will come out. This is the adjusting end. This is the non-adjusting end. This rubber seal, pop these off. And this is the plunger. You can see where the, the wedge rides right in there. On this ramp, pushes these out. And this rubber seal just goes around there, around the plunger. So we're gonna clean this grease, which is kind of dried up a little bit. We'll clean all that off and put some fresh grease in there. It's 
This one's a little different because it's the adjusting one. But this is the adjuster part of it. As the brakes move in and out with this little peg that goes into this slot, it adjusts, self-adjusts this out. We're going to clean all this up. And this one, the seal, you can just pull it down after you get that threaded out of there. It's a little different, smaller than the one for the other end. This is one of the non-adjusting brake plungers off from the front. Look how dried up that grease is. Well, those are all the parts that uh, come out of there. We'll get this all cleaned up. Some fresh grease in it. Right where the wedge goes straight in, there's a little cavity. It's got some grease in it. some of these brake parts. One other thing I want to do is make sure this can spin in here. It's kind of spring-loaded. These indents go into these notches, but it still needs to spin so I can initially adjust the brake adjuster. Perfect. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna put some grease on these parts and reassemble. Let me put some oil on that. I won't have to take it back apart. Okay, we'll stick the adjuster into the seal. We'll thread it into here. A little grease on the end of this and grease this up a little bit put the spring back in here when the wedge pushes on this it pushes this up and this little thing slides down and then when the brakes come back down this turns that adjuster because this piece here the brake shoe holds this straight so it's hard to see but what it's doing is it's turning this barrel and it's threading it off threading it down so the essentially it's pushing the adjuster up that's how that works this gets pushed up and then when it comes back down it threads this up we want this to slide nice and easy we want some grease where the wedges wedge rollers are going to go so the wedge goes in here so you want this lined up with that and this slot where the little spring-loaded adjuster, it'll only go one, you know, that will only go in there one direction. This will only go through that hole in one direction. There is a keyway on it, built into it, that goes down. So you kind of have to play with that to make sure you get that lined up. Set that on something clean. Let's see if I can see in there. Yeah, so you can see that it's in there. So I'm just going to pull it out till it's flush. Then we can drop this in. And thread this back in there. And we'll just tap that seal back down. We'll just grease this one up a little. Make sure to get this ramp that the wedge rides on. Now this one isn't spring loaded. This, this just holds it straight. Grease that up so it'll slide good. This seal will fit over this end of this one. I'm going to grease up the rollers on this. Rollers in the wedge. Let me see. I pushed it down, the spring down on that bench there, and I really got some grease inside on that wedge. Put a little grease in here. So there are slots on the sides where these little high spots ride to keep it lined up correctly. I'm 
There. So that goes just like that. Grease the end of that up. We can put the canister on there. We're gonna thread this on. See how this adjuster's on the top? Well, this adjuster's supposed to be on the bottom. So, on the front of the rear axle, The adjuster goes on the bottom. And turn the adjuster to make sure it's in all the way snug and then back it off a quarter of a turn okay, so this slot keeps that thing in the right orientation in there that thing being the plunger right there Now, now my slot for the brake shoe lines up perfectly. Make sure our locking nut is threaded on all the way. We're going to install the canister until it stops and then you know, then it, until it's bottomed out in there and stops, and then only loosen it no more than one turn. So we're almost, we're exactly where we want to be. I think maybe just a little bit like this. Okay. Some grease on the plunger. And where the brake shoe rubs on here. The other plunger. And then the same on the bottom. Now I'm going to install the brake shoes. And then on the brake shoe, it's kind of hard to see see but it says adjuster end on this side that doesn't have as much of a radius this is the adjuster end if you put this side on the adjuster this will actually hit the adjuster on on the front and the back of the axle you have the same setup one adjuster on the top and one on the bottom how to know where to put the adjusters if you have it all apart and you're not sure. You think about when you step on the brakes going forward and the shoes want to rotate this way. So all the force is going down on this and down here the force is going up. And that'll be on the non-adjusting plunger. You want that force to be pushing on the non-adjusting plunger. So non-adjusting plunger on the top in the front of the axle and the non-adjusting plunger on the bottom on the back. And you just want to make sure your plunger slots are lined up 
with the shoe and drop it down in there. That clip will hold it in, the retaining clip. So you can see there's a curve in here that's to go around the hub. I'm just going to turn it till that air supply line is out of the way. I'm going to put in the top one. Now we have to stretch it and get it in the bottom hole in there. There is a tool for this that I don't have. But let's see what I got. What I have is a rod out of a um, door, vehicle door. And I'm gonna hook that on the spring to pull it down. And then I'm gonna push it into the bottom hole with this pry bar. Okay, see I have the spring hooked. So I'm gonna put this right here. end it's not quite in let me see if I can set up the camera while I push that in there you can see it while it gets pushed in I'm just gonna push it in and I'm gonna try to do that again on this side we have the arch going out around the hub That my uh, central tire inflation airline is right in the way. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, the top one is in. I have it hooked. I'll put the pry bar right here. Not too bad. Now I'm going to install the drum. These weigh about 90 pounds. I'm gonna get the larger pole lined up with the CTIS stud. You don't want your fingers wrapped around there. So we need to turn that adjuster to push the brakes out. How do we do that? Like on a regular car, there's a slot in the dust plate, but we don't have that. What we do have is a tool that can bolt on here with the slot in it. The half inch socket, we're just gonna take this little bolt out. Put the tool on and this tool is shown in the TM's technical manuals now let's see if this um, brake spoon will work and that adjuster wants to turn this way to come out Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
that. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Oh, that's locked up now. Okay. Now you can step on the brake pedal a couple of times just to make sure everything's centered. Brake shoe. I have some airlines, brake airlines unhooked, so I can't right now. The air will just leak out of the system. But then we're gonna back it off the adjuster, which is turning it back in. until you achieve 20 thousandths. The specification is 20 to 40 thousandths of an inch. Now I'm doing that right here where this wear indication scallop is because these shoes actually come out past the flat wear surface inside the drum. So there's a little lip on the outside edge. So you cannot get the feeler gauge in over here. So I'm going through the scallop and I'm going a little bit sideways because if I go straight in, it actually kind of fits in the groove there. So what I'm doing is just going in like this beside this little lip here. And I said I didn't want to go straight in because this gauge just fits in this slot. That's why I don't want to go straight in. There we go. So we have 20 and it's 20 to 40. Let's see if I just go back in one to see what it does. There, I'm gonna leave it just like that. On the rear, you do that twice on each wheel. Now I'm gonna move the tool to the other adjuster on this same wheel. After all of your brake shoes are properly adjusted to the right specifications, you can go ahead and uncage the brakes. And you can stow your caging bolt right here so it's always available if you need it in an emergency. You can put your plug back in, and then all that's left to do is bolt your wheel and tire back on. On the front, all these components are the same. The canister is different. There's no spring part to the canister, no caging the brakes here. The wedge is the same. It just has a longer push rod in here from this service diaphragm. Both adjusters are in the same plunger housing because of the one canister. Both the fixed ones are down here. There's no canister back here, no wedge in there. These are just fixed, they don't move. Just pushes the pads out like this on the front. I know this brake video was kind of lengthy, but there was a lot to cover in the brake service. I hope it helped, and we'll see you next time.